Hey everyone, how's it going? Connor here today at eTrailer.com. We're going to be taking a look here at the Roadmaster Direct Connect base plate kit here for our 2020 Chevrolet Spark. So this base plate kit here is going to be an excellent option for our Chevy Spark. This is actually one of the most, if not the most popular base plate kits on the market. And there's a couple reasons for this. Number one, Roadmaster has a long-standing reputation for making quality products. And this Direct Connect base plate kit here is no exception. Now it's actually going to have a very nice hidden design. And what this means is we're not going to be able to tell that there's going to be a base plate kit installed on our vehicle, or at least it's not going to be super noticeable while we have the arms removed. In order to remove the arms, it's going to be super simple. All we need to do is pull this little lanyard on the side here, and then we should be able to twist them out, and then we're good to go. As you can see here, it has a nice clean look. And then when we are ready to tow, again, it's super, super simple to install these and remove them. We just want to install them with our tabs facing the side, press down, turn it over till we hear a click, and they're locked in place. That's it. So here's how everything looks with our arms removed. As you can see here, we're gonna have two safety chain tabs, which do stick out a little bit from the bumper. That's not really a bad thing at all because it gives us a lot of room to work with and attach our safety cables to these each time. It's gonna make things a lot easier. We're not gonna have to worry about as much damage to the vehicle when we're coming up, hitting our clevis hooks on the bumper fascia, which is a great reason why these are extended out so much. And something else I like that Roadmaster does here, as you can see we have these tubes here. We also have a tab, which is going to be kind of hard to see, but basically they're setting this base plate kit up with in mind that you're going to mount your other stuff such as your breakaway switch and your electrical connector. That way you can connect everything to the base plate kit here for a real seamless look and it's going to be make ease of installation a lot better. Now the trailer connector here doesn't actually come with our kit, but Roadmaster makes a really nice uh, umbilical cord set. Sometimes they're part of the uh, tail light wiring system, but essentially this is just going to accept a standard six pole plug here. It's going to make it real easy to connect, connect your electrical cord from your motorhome to your towed vehicle. And as we spoke of earlier, there's also going to be a welded tab that it's going to make it super simple to attach our breakaway switch to. Just to give you guys a quick little demo here of what it's going to be like each time you want to hook up to your motorhome. As I said, it's super fast and easy with this base plate kit here because we have the removable arms and we have all of our connections and mounting out here for us. So remember, we just need to install this to where these are paint pointed to the side, press down, turn over to lock in place. Then we can take our tow bar here. Depending on which tow bar you have, these next couple steps may vary a little bit. For this demonstration, we're gonna be using the Roadmaster Nighthawk. We notice on the sides of our removable arms here, we're gonna have these welded brackets that are gonna line up with our linchpin here. Then we can take our safety cables, and again, like I was saying, they're protruded from the vehicle, so it makes it nice and easy to just whip those on there. We don't have to worry about scratching our front bumper either. And then finally, we have our electrical connector which Roadmaster has extended from the vehicle here, again, just for ease of use. And there we go, we're ready to tow. So in regards to installation of our base plate kit here, this is gonna be something you can do at home by yourself. We're not gonna need a lot of specialized tools to do this. Most common hand tools will work just fine. We are gonna need some drill bits, half inch drill bits, I believe, in order to enlarge some of our holes, in order to mount our base plate kit here. So we're not actually gonna be drilling a lot of holes into the vehicle earlier. Several of these holes are already in place. We simply need to enlarge them to the correct size opening for our bolts. But aside from that, everything else should be pretty much smooth sailing. You could definitely do this at home by yourself. So now that we've gone over some of the benefits and features, let's jump right into installation and show you how it's done. 
So the first step of our installation here, we need to come to the front of the vehicle. We want to open up our hood. And we're going to have a couple fasteners we need to remove right here that's attaching the upper part of our fascia here to the core support on the vehicle. So we're going to need a 10 millimeter socket. We're going to have two 10 millimeter fasteners here, a push pin fastener here, and we're going to have those exact same fasteners on the other side. So we're going to go ahead and remove these now. This push pin fastener here. We just want to get a pry tool, flathead screwdriver, remove that center section, then the base should come out just like that. And again, we have these same three fasteners on the other side that need to come out as well. So now the next thing is we're going to have a couple fasteners we need to remove underneath, which are attaching the splash shield here to the subframe. So we're going to be using the same 10 millimeter socket that we used up top. There's going to be three bolts here, here, and here. Let's go ahead and remove those now. So now we have our splash shield here. We can go ahead and remove the final four fasteners so we can take this off the vehicle. Now we're going to need a seven millimeter socket. We're going to have four fasteners here, two on each side, here and here, and then it's just the mirrored image on the other side as well. So we're going to go ahead and remove those so we can take the splash shield off the vehicle. So now that we have the splash shield off, we need to come here to either side and we need to remove the wheel well liners, or rather just pull them back enough so we can undo a screw or a bolt up there and we can take the fascia off. So we're going to have two seven millimeter screws, one here, one here that we need to remove. So now we're going to come outside the vehicle here. We're going to need to remove these two push pin fasteners here, which are holding our fender liner here to the front bumper fascia. Once both of those are out, we can go ahead and loosen up this fender liner here. And the reason we need to loosen that is there's going to be a screw at the top that we need to take out. You're going to barely be able to see it just right there. We're going to have to use a seven millimeter socket to remove that. Once we get that out of there, we can go ahead and repeat this process on the other side. So our next step here is we can actually go ahead and take the bumper fascia off the vehicle. Now, if we have an extra set of helping hands nearby, that's definitely going to help us handle the bumper a little bit better and make sure we don't get any scratches. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up top to this grill here. We're just going to pull it up, make sure there isn't any retaining tabs holding it to this cross member here. And then we can come along to the edges of our bumper here, and we just want to slightly pull out. We should start to feel everything release. We can work our way over here to the headlight area. Just be very careful while we're pulling out here as well. So now that we have all of our fasteners out, we can go ahead and take the bumper and set it aside. We do want to make sure that we don't have any wires connecting our bumper still to the vehicle. Now this is going to vary depending on which model you have, but as you can see here, we do have some fog lights, so we are going to have a connection, a few connections rather, that we need to undo first. Take this red tab here, press it in, then we can depress the fastener and remove it. And again, we're going to have one on each side. And this is only going to be for models with fog lights. So now we need to go ahead and loosen this upper air dam here. It's attached to our core support. So we're gonna have four push pin fasteners at the top that we need to take out now. So we have two on this side and then two in the same location on the other side. 
So now we want to come to the bottom here of our bumper core. We're going to have another two of these plastic push pin fasteners, one on each side directly above this area here. And again, one on each side. So now we're going to have three 13 millimeter bolts on the outside here, which we need to take off. There's going to be three on each side. Once we get those off, before we undo it on the other side, we actually need to make our first cut here, which is something just really minor. We're going to be cutting, following the line, the curve of this plastic here. We're going to separate essentially the top half from the bottom half here. So we do need to make sure we're careful of our wiring harness here behind this plastic piece when we're cutting. So I'm just going to do my best to sort of follow this sort of natural curvature of the plastic. We're just going to be using some tin snips. If you have a razor blade, that would probably work equally as well. Just like that. We need to go ahead and repeat this process on the other side of the vehicle. So now, before we undo the other side, we're actually going to go ahead and unplug our ambient temperature sensor here. In order to do this, there's going to be a green clip on the back. We're just going to press it towards the vehicle, and it should release the clip fairly easy. We're also going to have one push pin fastener holding our wiring harness to the splash shield. Once that comes out, it should hang freely. Now we can go ahead and repeat this process on the other side so we can remove this bracket here. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be taking out this bumper core as well as this upper plastic splash shield, fascia, whatever you want to call it. In order to do this, we're going to have four 13 millimeter bolts on each side, which we can see here. So once we get all four of those out, we can go ahead and remove this to the vehicle. Now I do like to leave one in on each side. That way one side doesn't fall and we end up risk dropping this and damaging it. Now as we have all four of those bolts removed on each side, we can go ahead and set this aside. So now on the driver's side of the vehicle, we're going to have this horn here, which we need to take it. We need to take one 13 millimeter nut off, which is going to be on the back side. You're not really, really going to be able to see it here. But if we just take a box wrench here, we should be able to loosen that nut and let this hang down. Once we have that off, go ahead and just take the bracket, slide it off our stud here and just let it hang down. So now we want to come to the outside of our vehicle here where this little frame rail or core support is. We're going to see our two factory holes here. And we need to take a half inch drill bit and we need to enlarge both of these holes to a half inch. However, we're going to be an opposite side here. We need to drill all the way through this member here and enlarge the holes on the other side. Therefore, we need to make sure we're drilling as straight as possible. We also want to check the other side of this little frame rail here to make sure that we don't hit any of our components, such as our AC here or our radiator. So we need to be very careful when we're drilling out these holes. We're going to have two on each side that we need to enlarge as well. So now that we have our holes drilled all the way through on both sides of the frame, what we need to do is, since we did expose this metal here, we have some bare metal, first we're just going to take a metal file and we're going to shave off all the rough edges, the burrs that were left behind from the drill bit. So we're just going to shave on both sides like so. Then we're going to be taking a paint marker here, whatever you have at home, some spray paint will work as well. What we're going to do is we're just going to coat the inside of that hole where we expose the bare metal so we don't have any rust issues. So you want to go ahead and do that on both sides of the vehicle here, on both the outside and the inside of the frame rail. So now directly below our little frame support here, we're going to have this rectangular opening here. In the closest hole directly below this, we see that we have the factory pre-drilled hole here. We're going to want to enlarge this to a half inch as well as we did for the ones up here. We're going to have to do this on both sides of the vehicle. We need to drill through this first section here as well as the back section of the panel here. So we need to make sure our drill bit is relatively straight when we're drilling through the second there. So we're just going to go ahead and do that now on each side. So 
So now that we have our holes drilled all the way through, we can come back like we did for the top ones. Just gonna go ahead and file it down, get rid of all the rough burrs and edges as best we can. And then we can come back with our paint marker here and cover up all the bare metal. So now that we have all of our holes drilled, our next thing here is we need to trim a rectangular portion out of each side on our flange here for the, the bumper core. So in order to do this, we need to make a 9 16 inch by one inch square, which is gonna be roughly like so on the outside of each edge here on both sides. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tape measure here. We're gonna roughly mark the 9 16 inch mark. Which is about there and I'll come over to this side and do the same thing. Now that we have that mark made we need to go ahead and measure in an inch so we know how far we need to cut. That should be about right so we're going to go ahead and cut this out now and then we can repeat that process on the other side. So now that we have our marks made we can go ahead and cut this out. Now we have a couple different things we can use to cut this out. If you have a Dremel on hand, we should be able to use that, or we're actually gonna be using an angle grinder for this portion. Those are gonna be the two best tools for the job here, but if you have a hacksaw at home, it's a little bit safer to use. You could definitely get this cut out with that as well. It just may take a little bit more time. But since we're gonna be using an angle grinder, we wanna make sure we have all the proper safety equipment, such as gloves, uh, ears, uh, protection for our ears, as well as some safety goggles, and in this case, we have a protective mask as well. And now, once we have our cuts made, again, the same thing we've did with our holes thus far, we're gonna go ahead and clean up the edges with a file, and we're gonna apply some paint to make sure we don't have any rust tissues. And we can repeat that process on the other side. Now our instructions actually specify the air conditioning line on the driver's side, but that's actually not correct. It's actually gonna be on the passenger side, and it's gonna be this line we can see here. We need to unclip this from the side of the frame and free it from this black connector here. We're simply just gonna use a flathead screwdriver to open up the connector, and we should be able to pop the hose free once we undo that clip here. So just like that. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our main brace here. We're gonna set this up on the vehicle. However, if we come over to the passenger side here, we're gonna have a few things that we need to be careful of. We are setting this up on the vehicle. It's definitely gonna be a lot easier if we have a helping hand so we can maneuver this into place. What we're gonna do to help us is we're gonna take the radiator hose here. We're just gonna bend it back towards us slightly we're gonna use a zip tie here to try to hold it in place out of our way so we have more room to work. And then when we install the brace here, we need to make sure that we go over this air conditioning line here and that we don't damage it. So now that we have the brace for our base plate up on the vehicle here, we wanna take a half inch flat washer, we wanna place it over our hex bolt here. What we're gonna do now is, we're gonna try our best to get all, well, all four of the side bolts here, which attach this upper bracket portion to the frame rail here. Now keep in mind, we may need to tilt the base plate forward or backwards, upward and down, to center it on the hole, so we can get all of our bolts through. So we just need to pat be patient when we're doing this. We're gonna stick one in at a time, and then make the needed adjustments so we can get the other bolt holes to line up. So now that we have all four of our upper bolts attached, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take some red Loctite. This isn't included with our kit, so you can pick this up here through e-trailer if you don't have it. We're just gonna do a dab of the red Loctite on all four of our bolts here. Once we have our red Loctite on, we're gonna follow this up with a flat washer, a lock washer, and then our hex nut. And we're not gonna tighten these down right now, we're just gonna leave it hand tight for the time being. So now that we have all four of our upper bolts secure, we can go ahead and finish these off 
with the two lowermost bolt holes which we drilled earlier. Now keep in mind, we're gonna be using our longer hex bolts here for these bottom two holes. And at the rear, we're gonna take our little spacer block here. We're gonna insert the bolt there like so. And we're actually gonna come around the back side to the hole we drilled through. We're gonna try to stick it through the hole we have here in the front. And then we're gonna follow this up with our smaller flat washer in the kit. There's only two of these, so they should be pretty easily to distinguish. Then we wanna take our lock nut here. And then before we stick our hex nut on here, we wanna apply a little bit of Loctite. And then we're gonna repeat this process on the other side. And then we can begin to tighten down all our hardware. So now we're gonna to torque down all of our hardware to the amount specified in our instructions, making sure we start with these two lower bolts here and then we can tighten the top two. We're gonna to be using a 19 millimeter socket and wrench. So now that we have our base plates installed, we can go ahead and start reattaching all the items we took off the vehicle. And then the last and final step, we're gonna test fit our bumper to make sure that we know where we need to trim in order for it to fit properly. So now that we have all of our braces and support reinstalled back on the vehicle, we're gonna take our front bumper fascia here and we're just gonna loosely set it onto the vehicle here to make the approximate locations where we need to make our cuts. Now the instructions, they do give us a pretty good guide to where these cuts need to be, but if you've installed some other components such as your wiring harness, your breakaway, chances are you're gonna to need to make a few more cuts than they say. So it's best just to hold it on there now to map everything out. So as you can see here, we went ahead and got our lower bumper fascia cut out here. Now the best way we found to do this is to actually just go ahead and set the fascia up on the vehicle. We used a couple of bolts up there to secure it, just to hold it in place loosely. And then we just took a pair of tin snips. We just went around the openings here for our base plates, our base plate arms, our safety uh, chain tabs, as well as our breakaway and our electrical connector. So as you can see, we pretty much just cut out this lower section here and left the rest intact. Now we can go ahead and button everything up and get our fascia secured back on the vehicle. And that's gonna do it for our look and installation of the Roadmaster Direct Connect Base Plate Kit here for our 2020 Chevy Spark.